unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. With his own right hand and with his holy arm hath he gotten himself the victory. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So the, the landscape and character of the Church of the Apostles is changing and stretching in all kinds of new and unexpected ways uh, in these readings from Acts as we have them uh, uh, in this, as we come to the end of this uh, season of Easter and as Pentecost begins to, to appear on the horizon. This coming Thursday will be Ascension Day, and we'll uh, turn our attention for a moment to the, the great scene on the mountain and the, the great commission that uh, Jesus gives to his disciples. And uh, for this, this group of mostly simple, uneducated Galilean fishermen, it's almost an incomprehensible uh, task that they have in front of them, a future that would begin uh, in Jerusalem and Judea and then flow outward as Jesus commands them to Samaria and then with a global universal scope to the ends of the earth. It's a, it's a, a story that no one could have predicted. The, the church was growing like crazy right after Pentecost, but, but when Stephen was martyred in the streets of Jerusalem, most of these new Christians had to go into hiding. The leaders had to, to scamper out of town in a hurry. And last week in Acts 8, as we have followed this series of readings, we heard about Philip who had gone back up into Samaria, kind of the, the backwater area to the northeast, and his preaching uh, ministry was continuing there in those small villages and towns until the episode with the Ethiopian eunuch. That's what we heard last week in Acts 8. Um, and, and then after that encounter on the wilderness road through the Gaza, Philip is sent along by the Spirit to begin a new ministry in the Gentile city of Azotus, which had been the ancient Philistine port of Ashdod. So uh, new places, new territories opening up, uh, new, new venues for the proclamation of the word. So, so this morning in Acts 10, we're looking uh, now at Peter and his story. And uh, he, as he has fled from Jerusalem uh, with, with the uh, authorities kind of hot in pursuit, he has been heading uh, up to Joppa, a small coastal city, and uh, seems to be uh, living or attending to a small group of Christian Jews who have gathered there, uh, probably many of them refugees from the Jerusalem church, just as, as he was. So the, the two stories actually have kind of parallel the Acts 8 and Acts 10 stories. They're both about Gentiles. Uh, Ac <clears throat> excuse me, Acts 10 uh, believes with the story of Cornelius. Like the uh, Ethiopian official, he's not a Jew, but he's someone who's known as a, a man of prayer, of devotion to God. Uh, certainly not a typical Roman soldier, although he's called uh, the centurion. He, he's a man who is known to be generous and respectful to the Jewish community around him, unusual for an occupying military force, apparently, uh, but, but someone who, who had taken an interest and felt, felt called to, to learn more. Uh, uh, both he and that Ethiopian that we met last week uh, have a readiness about them. They're eager to hear the word. Uh, they, they probably can't put that into, into words exactly, but, but they have this longing, this deep curiosity. And you'll remember that at the end of the story last week, after Philip answers the question of the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian is reading uh, through the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he's really confused, and he says, tell me what this is about. Who is the prophet talking about? What is the point of this story? And uh, Philip uh, answers him by telling him the whole holy story of scripture and the good news about Jesus, about his life and death and his resurrection, about forgiveness of sin, about the promise of eternal life, 
And, and then the Ethiopian has this great line. He says, he, apparently there's a little pond or swamp or something, the caravan is going by. And he says, here is some water. What is to prevent me from being baptized right now? What is to prevent me? So that, that question is what uh, echo, echoes for us in Acts 10. Peter has had this dream. He's arrived in Joppa and is getting ready for lunch. He goes up to a rooftop patio where he's going to uh, spend some time in prayer and uh, has a kind of vision, a dream. Luke says that he is in a trance. And uh, in that moment, he sees uh, a sailcloth, a great big tablecloth, we might describe, full of all kinds of things that he knows he's not supposed to eat as, a, as a, an observant Jew. There are cheeseburgers and uh, sides of bacon and sausage and all kinds of, of uh, non-kosher items coming, coming down out of heaven. And uh, as he looks at that, he hears a voice, and the voice says, uh, have something to eat. And Peter says, no, I can't eat any of those things. That's all unclean. And the voice, then the voice of the Father says to him, uh, if I have told you to eat it, then it's not unclean. And, uh, and, and Peter uh, then, then is awakened from this trance, uh, he goes downstairs, and uh, the, this little church, this little gathering of folks are in some kind of a, a prayer meeting, and suddenly the Roman centurion uh, comes into the room with his family and his servants, and it's probably a moment of anxiety uh, to, to have the prayer meeting interrupted in that way, but then in that moment there is this miracle that takes place that's parallel exactly to the the miracle of the upper room on Pentecost Sunday. And suddenly the prayer breaks out into songs of praise and to speaking of tongues and the working of miracles and the, the sense of the present of, presence of the Holy Spirit is all around them, not just among the Jewish Christians, but also with Cornelius and with these uh, uh, Gentiles who have come into the room as well. And Peter suddenly makes the connection of his dream, his vision, and and this moment, and he stands up in, in the midst of the prayer meeting and says, can anyone forbid water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? Is there anything standing in the way of that? And he commands that Cornelius and his companions immediately be baptized. A teacher of mine once said that although uh, this uh, book by St. Luke, the companion to his gospel, has the traditional title, The Acts of the Apostles. It really uh, doesn't capture what Luke is trying to convey as he tells us this story, because the real interest that he has for, from start to finish is not really about these apostles, but is about the acts of the Holy Spirit. That might be even a better title uh, than the Acts of the Apostles. Certainly we can't help but thinking as we read these stories, both for Philip and for Peter, they must have been remembering that moment just a few weeks ago, as we heard in this morning's gospel, when Jesus uh, in that Last Supper had turned to his disciples and said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Uh, all before us now is the story in this Easter season of the Holy Spirit breathing the word of God through God's church to accomplish God's purposes. Sometimes we think we have a better idea. It's like the, the uh, kings of ancient Israel often thought that the way to make Israel a great nation was to build up a great army and develop uh, foreign trade and wealth and so on, but uh, the scripture time and time again tells us, as we heard in the psalm this morning, that it is God who wins the victory and not Israel's armies. And uh, that is, is the story that keeps coming again and again and again. Uh, uh, we don't tell God who he is or what is supposed to happen. He tells us. He isn't a character in our story. We are characters in his story. 
He promised to Abraham, I will make you a father of many nations. He led the prophets to sing about new Jerusalem where nations will stream to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. He came to dwell in his holy temple, a house of prayer for all people. And here in chapter 8 and chapter 10 of Acts, the story leaps off the page. The apostles aren't acting. It's just a story about them figuring out that they need to get out of the way. They're going to witness what God is doing, what he's making of them, what he's making of his church. Now, I know it doesn't sound to me very American. Uh, We're also very task-oriented and work-centered. We meet each other and we say, well, what do you do? Sometimes you read stories, biographies, and they try to get everything in. Look at all this person did. Look at the resume. Look at all she accomplished. Indeed, here is a life worth living. It probably gives us a sense in our lives to be able to control our own environment. It shapes the life of the church. There are whole libraries, even down the street at PTS here, there are whole libraries of practical how-to tips, 10 10 steps to church renewal, planting congregations in new communities, grow your church, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, work, shelf after shelf, and lots of good ideas in all of them. But but, uh, you can get worn out just reading the titles before you even open any of the books. And the number of committee meetings and task force groups and strategic planning processes that the books will uh, 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 call for guarantees a full career for 10,000 consultants. The message of these Pentecost stories seems to be again and again more like, don't just do something, stand there. Don't just do something, stand there. Share the message you have been given to share and then get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit do the work that the Holy Spirit intends to do. All the best efforts of humankind since our first parents were evicted from the garden and all our cleverness, all our hard work, and God whispers in our ear, don't worry, I've got this. I've got this. Doesn't mean being passive, wouldn't say Philip or Peter are passive, but it's about trusting that the one who... Uh, gives us the seed to plant in the garden is also the one who will care for the soil and the sun and the rain. He is the one who will see that his harvest will be gathered in. And what is there that we could do to prevent that? Amen.